Now, the whole Taraji P. Henson thing happened since last time, where she did the interview and she cried about how she doesn't get paid as much as she feels she deserves. She feels that her white counterparts get a lot more. For example, when she did Benjamin Button, she got 150000 and the total budget was about $150 million. It's terrible. Terrible. Who, who was in that movie? Who was the leading lady? Brad Pitt. I know Brad Pitt was in that. Okay. Who was the leading the lead? Uh, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. And then she was like number three or four? She was like, yeah, between three and five, depending on between how you look at it. Yeah, that, that's a low blow. I mean, I got paid probably almost that much to do Meet the Blacks too, which the budget was like $2 million, and I was probably like number five on the call sheet. Mm. So, you know, she definitely has every right to be upset about that, being underpaid. And it, it, and the thing about doing a movie that great, okay, you know, sometimes, okay, I'll take this $150,000 to do this movie that the whole world is going to see. But after that, you guys better show me some respect and give me some money. And they probably still came back with some bullshit after that and bullshit after that. Yeah, she has every right. That kind of budget, you know. And the thing about it, what can she turn it down so to get another person to do the movie? They just, I think they have to just show the respect and pay her what. If he call her for the movie that big, everybody's respect her and pay her what she's supposed to get. Well, I mean, she, she wanted 500, is... but they said 150 is all we could do. And she ultimately took it and she won, uh, well, she got nominated for an Oscar. A supporting actress for it. Listen, I, I caught a lot but what of flack. And what happened after that? That's why I'm curious of what happened. Well, she got a lot more roles, but she feels that she never got... The only time she got 500 was when she starred in that one movie with uh, Tyler Perry. Right. And I got to give... And you got to... I got to shout out Tyler Perry for that. Tyler Perry has... He gave her her first... I mean, Tyler probably gave Tiffany her first big bucks. Tyler Perry... Tyler's given a lot of people their, their first, first big, big bucks. And, come, and shout out to Tyler. Shout out to him for that. Yeah. For showing respect... You know, to his fellow black actors and actresses that deserved to get paid it right for their hard work they've put in this industry for all these years. So shout out to Tyler for showing the respect. Love you, Tyler Perry. Uh, well, I mean, I caught some flack because I made some comments about this. Okay. And, and I, what I basically said was, well, I said a few things. She had a but, three million dollar house, something like that, right? I'm sorry? You said she had a three million dollar house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I, I, what I, I basically said, I mean, one of the things I said, which, which I later apologized for, was that she lives, she's worth $12 million and she lives in a $6 million house. And ultimately, the average fan and working person doesn't want to hear multimillionaires complain about money. And I'm in that same boat. You know what I'm saying? Like, a multimillionaire getting 100 instead of 300 when the average person, it takes them two years to make that over what someone makes for two weeks of work. I feel like... It's a little hard to get empathy for this type of situation. Yeah, but if the money's there. Well, listen, I apologize for that because I feel like, you know something, someone's personal wealth and whatever investments they made to maintain that really has nothing to do with this conversation. It was a bit of a low blow and I publicly apologize for that. But what my main point was in this whole conversation was that when it comes to entertainment and most business, businesses in general, you're never going to get what you want. You're never going to feel compensated the way you feel based on the work that you feel that you deserve, which is why at some point you have to transition from just being an employee or a contractor to actually owning and producing your own work. I had to do that early on. My first project, which I killed myself, it was a documentary called Ghost Ride the Whip. I spent three or four months working on it. I got 25000 and never saw a residual check. At that moment, I said... This is not going to work for me. I need to create content that I own that I will put out myself. And when you look at, because people are like, oh, well, look at Reese Witherspoon. She's worth a billion dollars. Reese Witherspoon produces her own projects. Oh, a lot of these movies that Reese wow. is in, it's her production company. And what I said was at the point that Taraji is in she her 50s yeah, she could do with that. the connections and the respect that she has in the industry, there's no reason why she should keep complaining that other people are not hiring her. It's time for her to start working on her own projects that she herself. stars in, that she partners with directors and cinematographers and writers. And she's big enough to do that. And she's way big enough to do that. There's no there's no reason at this point to be complaining and feeling unappreciated. It's time to actually turn things around and put things into your own hands. And at that point, you can't complain you didn't get paid enough because you're paying yourself. And you're paying yourself off your own profit if it's a great project. 
That's my point. And I was hoping, you know, that these type of conversations, I know I'm the bad guy for saying this, but I'm hoping that it would reach her and she'll think, okay, you know something? Fuck, fuck these movie companies. Or you know something? If Tyler appreciates me, I'm going to just go with uh, Tyler Perry the whole time. Fuck all these other projects. I'll go where I appreciate it. And that was my point. You know, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah. I'm th- I mean, if she's the fourth, fifth person on the car, she and the, the budget is $150 million. She deserves a lot more than that. I mean, that's the you might pay her one percent. Yeah, <laughs> not even two percent of the budget. Yeah, that's a low blow. That's disrespectful to Taraji. She's putting a lot of work. She's been a lot of classics, a lot of great movies. We talking about Baby Boy. We talking about what's the one with uh, that one Oscars for uh, with um Terrence Howard. What's that called? Oh yeah, um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, Man, the Memphis one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hustle and flow. Hustle and flow. There we right. go. Yeah, she, uh, listen, and, and what I've always said was, I am a super fan of Taraji. She's killed it every time, every movie. I've watched probably 95% of her films. I've never seen a bad Taraji performance, which is why I'm just saying, she's it's, it's time to start doing do your, your own, own produce shit. Your own thing. Produce your own thing. Produce do, your own shit. T- uh, Taraji, whether you know it or not, you're bigger, you know, and people tell me that all the time, Mike, you're bigger than what you think you are. Taraji, yeah. you're really bigger than who you think you are. Honestly. Produce and there's so movie. many streaming platforms out there yeah. that will buy a great project. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, Tubi. <laughs> it, it goes on and on. Well, maybe not Tubi, but you know what we meant, right? Even even Tubi's yeah, cutting Tubi's deals for big enough projects. Nah, they, they you know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 Tubi is not just free Tubi. There's also the premium part. And they're trying to get market share as well. So, so don't don't downplay anyone who's offering a good, good check market. for what it is that you're offering. It's not like before where you had to get into movie theaters or else it's a flop. Right? No, lots of very successful projects that never hit a movie theater. So ever. True. And that was my point. You know, and people are you know, oh, Vlad's racist, and oh, he shouldn't have the right to talk about black women. And it's whatever. Yeah, you was definitely wrong. On that, but you know, I'm being glad you understood that yeah. she, you know, she she should have got me. She should she probably should got a million dollars. Gosh, you know, I mean, what was that her big first white movie? Uh, her first big white movie? Uh, maybe. Well, I mean, it been, yeah, I, mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah, she was doing more black film, John Singleton yeah. films and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe. I mean, or, or here here's the other option. Fuck the upfront money. Just give me a percent of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can negotiate those things, especially if you're a Taraji. Yeah. You can negotiate. Yep. I don't want nothing up front. Nope. Instead of instead of giving me one percent of the budget, give me five percent of I th- I mean, give me one percent off the back end. Off the back, yeah, give me two percent off the back end. Yeah. How's that? Because he, he here's the thing about business, and people don't want to talk about this, right? Well, it has to do with your agents as well. They, it has to do with got, the agents. Yeah, they got, with everything. But but here, here's the thing about just basic, basic business, right? Let's say, you know, you and I are doing an interview here, and I pay you to do this interview. Right. If the interview blows up, and let's say he does like, like the Shannon Sharp, he does 50 million views, you might feel some type of way, oh, I only got paid this much, mm-hmm. and you made this much, and it's a little bit unfair. But if at the interview flops, exactly. no one's there to give you your money back. At no point has anyone ever said, hey, Vlad, you paid me this much and it did really badly. Let me give you half my feedback. That's never the conversation. And unfortunately, when it comes to business, these are how the conversations go. Whoever's putting up all the money and taking all the risk and giving someone else a guaranteed amount, that amount will not be ultimately what that person like will deserve if it ends up being a big project. Right. But a lot of times, you know, like for example, like she complained about her treatment of the color purple. Color purple. Color purple is a losing project. It's in the hole. It's in the hole like 40 million right now. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And she was saying how well, it was like, well, is, is this, it's a musical I heard, right? It's a part musical, yeah. Oh, part, okay. Boosie well, walked out of it with his with his daughter because he's going to watch it. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, musical is not, a, it's not everybody's thing, you know? Yeah. So they probably should have went a different route with it. It was a great idea, and we were looking. For, everybody was looking forward to it. But I didn't know it was a musical. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So maybe I go check it out. Who else? Who else? Part of it is it's Oprah and Taraji. And Let's see. Color purple. Uh, 
uh, uh, Sierra's in. So, so is it in it? Where is it? Is it in theaters? Yeah, it's in theaters. Taraji, Daniel Brooks, Coleman Domingo, Corey Hawkins, Gabrielle Wilson, aka her, uh, Holly Bailey, Louis Costa Jr., Sierra, Star John started. Batiste. What's the budget of Fantasia? What's the budget? Would tell you? Does the budget, budget not- was around 100 million. The box office is currently 66 million. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we at least with black people, us, everything's a word of mouth. So you just take one person, like, eh, then, you know. And it's over. Every, yeah, it's over. So I'm not sure who said, eh. <laughs> I mean, it had to miss my biggest, eh.